Good morning. After last week's really cold weather, where it, it seemed like autumn had come early, we've got another fantastic day. So we seem to have a last burst before we get into autumn proper. We've, we've usually had some good weather in September, so I hope we get a bit more. I've come out today to Stoke Rochford Hall Park in Lincolnshire, and I'm planning to do uh, an update video on the Ribble CGR ALE. Now, my first ever video on this channel and how it all started was just over a year ago and it was on that exact model. That's why I started the channel in the first place, really, as just one video. But it's had thousands of views, so I thought it would be a good idea to give you an update after three and a half thousand miles. So I'll take you through what I like about the bike and there's just one thing I don't like about it and I'll tell you that near the end. Today is a perfect example of why I bought the Ribble CGR ALE. Now I ride a normal bike, me powered as I call it, and I ride lots of miles without power. But there are days when I really don't feel like riding. And today is one of those days. I wanted to come out and make this video today while the weather's good, but I really didn't feel like it. I've been having this uh, shoulder problem uh, a lot of pain, which I think is rotator cuff. Got an appointment on the 17th of September to have a steroid injection, so that should cure that. But it means I've not been sleeping very well, so not been feeling great. And today was a day that I would have probably easily said, no, I'm not coming out. But of course, I could switch on some power, which I've done, and I've had a very gentle ride up here, a few hills on the way. Uh, but it's been easy because of this bike. So I'll just remind you of the spec first of all. I ordered with the Shimano 105 group set and that's complete Shimano 105 all the way through. And that comes complete with hydraulic disc brakes. And you will have seen in a, another earlier video if you have looked at it that uh, I changed the pads on those from the fin type to standard pads and I have to say it's working really well. I did order the bike with a carbon seat post but the offset wasn't quite right so I've moved that back to aluminium. The hydraulic disc brakes are extremely effective, I have no issues at all with braking, they are totally confidence building. It's a very comfortable riding position. You'll see I actually turned the stem over. This isn't the redshift stem. I, I put the standard stem back on just to uh, do this review. Uh, but you can see I've got the, the stem turned over. So it's making for a very relaxed riding position. One day a cyclist welder stopped me and, and looked at the bike and he was really impressed with the quality of the finish. One of my favourite things about this bike is that it's light enough to ride without power. And in fact, I've carried out many rides with no power whatsoever. And really I use power either like today, when I'm not feeling particularly energetic, or on days when there's quite a hilly terrain. It means I can keep up with other riders that are stronger than me. My son, for example, is a, a strong rider and it used to be that he'd have to wait for me at the top of hills. Now he doesn't. I usually have to wait for him. The bike comes complete with fittings for a rear rack, so it gives you the ability to use this bike effectively for bike packing. I literally can go wherever I like. I, I can see a track disappearing from the road, and I can just follow that track. I don't have to think about what the bike's capable of. Now, in truth, I think I probably give the bike a harder life than it should have. I think there's a temptation, especially now I'm using the Redshift shock stop system, that I can take the bike into rougher terrain than maybe I should do. Maybe I'm crossing over into mountain bike territory. But I'm actually at the stage now where I'm thinking of selling my mountain bike. I just don't use it. Another question I'm asked regularly is about sizing. Now I went for the extra small frame, I'm about, I think I'm 168 centimetres. But in the Triban, for example, I think that was a small. So you can't actually cross-reference other makers' uh, sizing. 
So if you're a if you're a medium in say a trek, you might be a small in a ribble. So follow their sizing guide, and then clearly if it doesn't work for you, you've got some sort of comeback on ribble, I would guess. But I found it worked for me. Uh, I was actually on the cusp between small and extra small. And the suggestion is that you do go for the smaller option. Uh, looking at it now, I think I could have probably gone for the small, but I guess as I get older and I'm less flexible, then maybe I'll be glad that I went for the extra small. The only problem with the extra small is there isn't a lot of room within the frame for your water bottles and if you want a, a bag under the frame, for example. I ordered this bike with Marathon 35mm tyres and I'm very happy with them except for when winter came. I did find them quite skittish in the winter. Uh, I had a couple of times I was thrown off and it was certainly down to the tyres. There was the famous carrot incident uh, which I did mention in a previous video. Certainly I, I didn't have the confidence in the marathons. So I have changed them. I'm now using the Continental Contact Plus. The Contact Plus is certainly giving me much more confidence on the ride. Now, it'll be interesting to see how they perform in the winter and I'll come back to you on that and let you know how they're going. But so far so good. And all the reviews suggest that they are grippier. They still have the puncher proof qualities of the marathon. So I'm hoping that they're the answer. Now, although these tires are hard, that's been remedied somewhat because I'm using the Redshift uh, shock stop system with the suspension seat post and stem, and that's made a whole world of difference. So it certainly, if, if you're having a problem with the ride on the bike and you want to use a harder tire, or maybe you're using a narrower tire, then I would certainly recommend the redshift system. One of the excellent features of the e-bike motion system is that there's no friction at all when you're riding. My brother has a Cube e-bike. It has the Bosch crank drive. Now he tries to ride that without power and he gets quite a lot of friction from that gearbox. It's not a pleasant bike to ride uh, without power and of course it's very very heavy. Now in terms of duration, uh, yes got a bigger battery but he and I rode together, uh, we did almost 50 miles and I still had quite a bit of power left when he actually ran out about 100 metres from his home. So not an awful lot of difference because the e-assist bike using the e-bike motion is a lot lighter. And I think I've said before, this bike weighs a total of 15 kilos with all my gear on it. So that's, that's not heavy for an e-bike. I mean, normally you're looking at over 20 kilos. From reading your comments over the past year, uh, one of the common complaints about the e-bike motion system is the push button control. Now, if you are, for example, on the green setting, which is your lowest or eco setting, and you want to actually get back to neutral, so not using any power at all, you've actually got to go up through amber, red, and then back again. Likewise, if you're in amber and you want to get back to green, you've got to go up through red, back to white, neutral, and then back up to green. Now, some people don't like that, and it's particularly people that have been used to traditional e-bikes that have some sort of control on the handlebar. What I do like is the fact that the bike looks like a normal bike, any other bike. And sometimes people have to be told that it's e-assist before they'll believe it really is. So I like that. I like the styling. And that sleek styling means that you've got to have some sort of minimalist control. And that's how this iWOC push button system works. Uh, I did produce another video on how the iWOC works, but it's, it's simple and it suits me fine. I think if you've gone from a normal road bike and you're moving up to this system, you won't really see a problem because you've not been used to anything else. E-Bike Motion have made a companion app for their system. It works on a smartphone. You can do all sorts of things on there. You can alter the engine settings. You can view exactly how much battery you've got left. You can map the route. It does all sorts of things. 
Also has an engineering mode that shows you how many charges the battery is used. It shows you the temperature of the battery, which could be useful for winter charging, but I don't use it. Personally, I don't find I need it. Uh, my advice with the engine settings would be just try the bike first, get used to it, see how you go without it. I do know some people do love the engine settings and actually even alter them for each ride. Personally, I don't do that. I just adjust the amount of power I put in. So I would suggest before you get into messing around with settings, probably get used to the bike first and then see what it can do for you. I think it's probably time that eBike Motion revisited the app because with so many more manufacturers using their system, there are one or two flaws I think in the app. One being that it eats an awful lot of battery. So uh, maybe they'll do that and if they do, hopefully I can review it here. From talking to people that have bought ordinary e-bikes, they probably tended to buy them because they think an e-bike's a good idea and an e-bike's an e-bike. But I do know there are quite a few people who would have bought the e-assist type version had they really understood the differences. Another question that comes up regularly is endurance. How far can you ride on one battery charge? Now that's very, very subjective because of course, it depends how much you're going to pedal, it depends how many hills there are, it depends on your weight. There are so many variables that will affect that. So I would never ever give anybody that advice. What I would tell you is what I've done. And for example, the ride I did in the New Forest a few weeks back with my brother, it was uh, almost 50 miles, uh, still had battery left. So, uh, you know, I could, I could probably on that day got 60 70 miles uh, and I was using the power most of the time albeit on low power but of course when I did the test of the battery range extender uh, I had the bike loaded up to well over 20 kilos wasn't that hilly but I actually did 100 miles and I still had a percentage left on the battery I think it was five percent again there's a video I'll put it up the link up there for you if you want to look back on that one. The other question would be uh, why why buy a Ribble and I would say that's up to you it's down to this it's down to all the variables such as the styling uh, what's available the price and all the rest of it what I would say is if you're buying an e-assist bike I would certainly recommend the e-bike motion system now that's available on many many makes now so you have much more choice uh, personally, I like Ribble. I like the fact that it's a British design. I like the fact that the factory is in this country and that I can contact them for help if I need to. And I personally, I think it's the right product for me. Now, I said there was something I don't like about the bike and that's the paintwork. The paint on this bike, I went for the standard red and it chips awfully. So. For example, as soon as I put the rear pannier rack on, uh, the paint just chipped off. It, it, it almost flakes away. So that's not good. It might be that the paint system has changed, so I can't speak for the current model. Uh, maybe Ribble would like to make a comment below about that. But certainly when I bought the bike, that was the standard color. I think it was that and that charcoal -y color. I went for the red. Now I see there's lots more exotic choices. When I first had this bike and I was having the problems, I did ask them if they could send me some touch-up paint. Um, they didn't even reply to that, so I just left it. I note that Ribble are now selling touch-up paint. It's a rather expensive £23 for 25 mil. I think if I was buying a new bike now at uh, £2,500 plus, I'd be asking for a pot of paint to be thrown in. As I said, I didn't have the luxury of uh, having any touch-up available when I bought my bike, so I popped out to a local model shop with a sample of the paint that had flaked off, and I bought this 20ml pot of perfectly matched paint for, I think it was about 90 pence, and I've touched it in, and as you can see, it's a pretty reasonable job, colour match is good. Thankfully, as we've got away from the old e-bikes are cheating comments, uh, people are now finding e-bikes are a much, much more acceptable 
form of transport. It's getting many more people out riding that, than would normally do. But it also means that as we get on in years, and you know, I'm getting on now, and it means that I can still keep on riding on the days that I'm probably feeling a bit fatigued. So it certainly is a tool for the future. And you can see by the number of manufacturers now using the e-bike motion system, this hub drive system is catching on. So that's enough talking from me. Uh, I think the best thing to do now is do what we should be doing with a bike and ride it. <laughs>